Hi, YouTubers. My name is Kai. I am a dental assistant, been a dental assistant for almost 20 years. So today I'm going to come um, to you and talk about how to prepare for your Michigan State dental radiography exam. And um, I'm just going to throw out a bunch of things that you need to know for the exam. Um, we'll start off with uh, the different types of x-rays that are going to be taken. You need to know those different types. Periapicals, bite wings, occlusals. Um, you need to know the different types of film sizes that are used. For occlusal, for instance, you're going to use a size 4. Um, what are the intraoral radio, um, intraoral uh, x-rays taken? I just mentioned them. PAs, bite wings, occlusals. Extraoral radiographs taken, uh, panoramic, cephalometric. What are the views you see on each one of these um, x-rays? So for instance, the panoramic, you're going to see the full upper arch and the full lower arch and the TMJ joints. So that's what you see on the panel. On the cephalo, you see the head, the full head side view. Um, bite wings, you see the upper and lower crowns together of the posterior teeth. Periapicals, you're gonna see the crown of the tooth and the apex and beyond the apex. Um, so that's what, those are the things you see on a periapical. All different kind of questions asking you about that. Um, what else? What is seen on a molar um, PA? You're gonna see the premolar, the second premolar on the molar PA. So you got to make sure that that's in the picture. And that's in the picture because you want to see the mesial contact of, for instance, number three. So you're going to see number four in the picture. For the premolar PAs, you want to see the canine in the picture and so on. What else? What are the two different types of techniques um, used for taking x-rays? You have the bisecting technique and you have the paralleling technique. The paralleling technique is most accurate, less distortion, and it's used most often. What do you see on the radiographs? Um, things that show up radiopaque. What color is the radiopaque? White. So what type of things will show up white on the radiograph? You'll see metal, dense bone showing up white on a radiograph. What is radiolucency? Uh, lucency, radiolucency on the dental x-ray shows up black or dark. Things that show up black or dark on the x-ray would be spaces, um, sinuses, um, foramens, those type of things, sutures, canals. Um, you also need to know landmarks on x-rays landmarks on PAs, landmarks on bite wings, landmarks on the panoramic film. Things like tuberosity. Tuberosity is the bulging bone behind the, the last molar on the upper arch only. You're only going to see the tuberosity on the upper. So they have trick questions asking about the tuberosity, you know. Um, external oblique, internal obliques is only seen on the lower arch in the molar PAs. And then you need to know where they are. And so check those out in your book. Um, it's very hard for me to show you that on this video. Sinus walls and sinus cavities are only seen on the maxillary arch. I use upper maxillary, lower, mandibular, but the sinus walls and the cavities of the sinus are located only on the upper PAs. All right, other things you need to know about, um, you need to make sure you look through your book or Google it. Google what these things look like on an x-ray. For instance, a porcelain crown. I can't explain it, so you have to really look look at it on, the, on um, a picture. So know what a porcelain crown looks like. Know what a root canal looks like. Know what an amalgam looks like. I should have told you to take notes at the beginning of this video. <laughs> pause it when you need to pause, because sometimes I could just be rattling on things. But I should have did that earlier. Sorry. So amalgam, what that looks like. PFM, porcelain fused to metal crown, what that looks like, 
full gold crown, what that looks like on an x-ray, space maintainer, partials. Even though we don't take x-rays or partials, partials have been taken on an x-ray before by mistake. So that's an error. You need to know how to correct your error. When you see a partial on the film, you go, oh, oops, didn't take that out. So how do you correct it? So anyways, you need to know what a partial looks like on a film. They may have a picture of that on the test. Pins, post, what those look like. Fixed retainers, what those look like. Earrings, that's another error that you should know to have them take out a head, but what do those looks like, look like on the ears? Because they will have some pictures of that. Implants, braces, bridges, composites, and decay. All of these things, you need to know what they look like on an x-ray. Um, radiograph errors and um, how they're made. Radiographic errors and how they're made. Things like elongation, that's the lengthening of the two. How do we um, make that error and how do we correct it? So elongation is made with not enough vertical angulation. So you have to increase the angulation to get rid of that. For shortening, you need to know what it looks like and how it's made. Too much vertical angulation um, causes for shortening. Cone cuts. Cone cuts is a fill a PID placement error. You didn't cover, here's my PID. <laughs> you didn't cover the whole film. So it, it shows up white um, on, a, on a film if you have a cone cut. Overlapping of the contact area. That is basically your vertical angulation error. So that's the movement of the PID from side to side, left to right. Too much will cause overlapping. Okay. Black film. What causes your film to appear black? Well, you exposed it to natural light. Clear film. You didn't expose it to x-rays at all. Crease film. You bent the film. You squoze it. You bent it. The patient bit down on it. Made a crease. <clears throat> Double exposure. Um, you snap the x-ray twice. So you put it in the mouth. You press the button and then you didn't take it out or you kept it in the mouth and moved it to another place and you press the button again, double exposure. Uh, reverse film causes the herringbone pattern. Um, you put the film in the mouth backwards. Overlapped film. So this is a processing error where you may have put one film in the processor and put the uh, second film in there too soon where they developed over top of each other. Developing error. Fixer spots, white spots on the film. Fixer splashed. Sometimes this happened during manual processing. You got some um, uh, spots on your film before you developed it. So causing the white spots, that's fixer spots. Developer on the um, film causes dark spots on the film. And more. There's all kind of errors. Read through them all in your radiology book. I'm just mentioning a few. So what do things look like on an x-ray? So write these down. What does mixed intention look like on an x-ray? You're going to see that on your test. What does baby teeth look like on an x-ray? How many teeth does a child intention have? 20. How many in the adult intention? 32. Good. What does a fractured tooth look like? Abscess look like? Bone loss look like? look at pictures on Google or in your book so you can be able to identify these things tests if they appear on the test. The test is going to be all kind of random questions so I'm just going over some things that I remember, some things that um, may be on your test. <clears throat> you know how you need to remember how to um, keep infection control um, keep cross-contamination from happening during the processing and the taking of your x-rays. They're going to have some questions on that. Um, how do you prepare for taking x-rays? What do we do with the patient? You know, have them remove the uh, earrings, for instance, take out dentures or anything that's removable out of the mouth, check for pregnancy, uh, things like that. Place the lead apron, thyroid collar, all those things are things we did do to prepare the patient for x-rays. 
what is the difference between dental radi radiography and what is the positive um, things about digital radiography? Read that in your book. Um, or the advantages of dental radiography. And then you also need to know the process of manual processing. You know, uh, for instance, you start off with the developer and then you move it to the water and then you do the fixer and then you do the water. And then for automatic processing, the system is developer, fixer, water, dry. So you need to know how those processes go. All right. So that's all I have for you today. If you have any comments or you want me to talk about something in detail, leave comments below. If I can help you out with any subject dental assistant related, leave comments uh, below. And um, I'm here to help the best I can. So hopefully this helped you out for preparing for your dental radiography state exam, state of Michigan. All right, good luck.